Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Curse the News. And obviously let's just get straight into the news today. As always, there is um, obviously some amazing news um, about theme parks, rides and attractions all over the world. So let's just get straight into the news today. Our top story for tonight, Alton Towers Festival of Thrills has officially started. And obviously, um, Alton Towers recently, in recent years, the events lineup has been expanding like crazy. Um, obviously, in two, it all started pretty much back in 2020. Um, so you'd think that, obviously, COVID would put a halt to everything, and I mean everything. But Alton Towers still managed to do their new for 2020 event, Oktoberfest. Um, that was the start of their new events lineup for the next couple of years. Because after that, in 2021, they introduced Mardi Gras, which was also a brand new event for that year. And now this season, they're once again adding a brand new event for 2022, this time um, being focusing on their seven major coasters. So Nemesis, Oblivion, Galactica, 13, Rita, The Smiler and Wicker Man. And that event is called Alton Towers Festival of Frills. And basically what it is, is um, they basically put up stages um, ar in, around their seven major coasters. And they have live bands and performances playing the soundtracks full of eyes as live music. So it's like a music festival combined with the roller coaster. So it's a very unique and amazing event. I've not been there yet, but I'm actually going to go there tomorrow. So that's going to be um, interesting to see. I'm going to film it all. I'm going to film all the shows that are, that are on um, on stage. Uh, so it's obviously going to be very interesting to see. They've even got like uh, themed um, bands performing for each individual ride. Um, obviously, they haven't built a stage for every individual like roller coaster because some coasters are in literally right next to each other. So in some areas where roller coasters are built directly next to each other, they've built one stage per area and they have um, the two different rides bands sharing that stage. So obviously, they have one stage in Dark Forest that shares both 13 and Rita. Same with X Sector where they have a stage that shares the Oblivion and Smiler, and uh, obviously in Forbidden Valley as well for Nemesis and Galactica. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only one that doesn't is Wicker Man, because that's literally uh, far away from any other roller coaster at Alton Towers. Um, but obviously, it sounds like an incredible event, very unique from what I've heard, and I can't wait to experience it. It's very different than what they've done before, because I've, I've noticed that some of the events they've done before have been based on like events that are celebrated all over the world. So like Oktoberfest, that's celebrated, well actually it's celebrated quite all over the world, but it's mainly celebrated in Germany. Um, and obviously Mardi Gras, once again, that's starting to be celebrated all over the globe, but it's primarily um, originates in the United States. Obviously, um, this Festival of Frills, um, that is pretty much unique to Walton Towers. Um, and obviously, it looks absolutely incredible. They're, they're, this is literally the biggest um, year for events at Alton Towers. Um, obviously, last year was the biggest year for events. Now this year is, because obviously they've got Festival of Frills, which is from the 4th of April, so this Monday, to the 6th of May 2022. And then they've got Mardi Gras, which is from the... Um, I think it's from the 21st or 21st of May until the 19th of June this year. Then they've got Oktoberfest, which runs from September until October 2022. Then they've got Scarefest, which is actually celebrating its 15th anniversary this year, which runs throughout October until end, until the 30th of October this year. And then obviously they've got Fireworks, which runs on the 4th, 5th and 6th of November. And then we've got Christmas event, which is running from November 2022 until January 2023. This is the biggest year of events for Alton Towers that they've ever had. And it's, it looks very exciting. And obviously the first year, um, the first event they have in the year is Festival of Frills. But I still do feel like that in the gap between Mardi Gras and Oktoberfest, um, obviously Mardi Gras ends in June and Oktoberfest starts in September. So that's like a, like a two or three month gap. They could easily fit in another event. In that time, I wouldn't be surprised if next year they introduce a new event that goes in that time gap. I know they had the um, ultimate summer of fun last year, but one, I don't think that's returning this year, and two, it wasn't like a major event like Mardi Gras, Oktoberfest, or Scarefest, or anything like that. 
that was more of a smaller event for summer. So I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce like a major summer event next year, but that'll be really interesting to see what they do. Um, obviously, how they're going to pull that off, I don't know, because all their other events have like a unique theme to them. So obviously, Festival of Thrills is roller coasters. Mardi Gras is like a carnival theme. Oktoberfest is very Bavarian themed. Scarefest is obviously Halloween themed. Um, fireworks are obviously like bonfire night themed. Well, the first day of the fireworks takes place on bonfire night. And obviously Christmas is themed to, well, Christmas. <laughs> um, so I wonder if they manage to do a new event next year. That means that they'll have seven events next year if they, if they keep up this pace of introducing new events every year. That is actually insane to think. To think, oh, obviously in um in two thousand twenty, they only had two events: Oktoberfest and Scarefest. They were supposed to be doing fireworks, but that got cancelled because of lockdown. And they didn't. I don't think they really did sort of Christmas event. Then obviously in two thousand twenty one, they introduced Mardi Gras and revamped the Christmas event and actually had the fireworks that year. Now they're doing all that this year, but with the new Festival of Frills events. So it's obviously very incredible, and I can't wait to go to Festival of Frills. Um, this weekend. In other news today, Walt Disney World has officially announced that Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind will open on the 27th of May 2022. And obviously this news has been heavily rumoured over the past couple of months. It all started when um, one of the bosses at Walt Disney World, I don't know who it were, um, basically it leaked that Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is going to open on like a Memorial Day weekend or something like that. And so everyone started thinking, oh, is Guardians of the Galaxy going to open in May? Um, and obviously, early this week, those rumours were confirmed when they released a new teaser um, saying that Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind's all new roller coaster opening 27th of May. Um, I think that's on Friday this year. And this ride has been, we've waited this news for a very long time. It was originally supposed to open last year. Um, for the start of the 50th anniversary of celebrations, I think it might have been, and I'm not sure if it was supposed to open alongside Rat Remy's Ratatouille Adventure or I'm not sure if all the new attractions for the 50th anniversary were supposed to open the same day or what. I don't know, but obviously they've still got time for it to open during the 50th anniversary of celebrations because it's going to go on for 18 months. Started in October last year, it's going to finish sometime in like summer next year. That is a long celebration. So they've got plenty of time to open all these new attractions that they've gone planned. Except for probably the Mary Poppins attraction, Spaceship Earth Overhauled. I don't know what's going on with them at the moment. But until then, we've got the new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And um, if you don't know what that is, basically it is a new world's first roller coaster from Vekoma. Um, it's a bit like um, sort of a take on Mac Ride's extreme spinning coasters. But obviously, um, Guardians of the Galaxy doesn't have any, any inversions. Because obviously it's a Disney World that they're going to make it so it doesn't go upside down. Um, but it's, it is capable of launchers, and it has spinning ride vehicles. On top of that, it's also got onboard audio, and it's all it's an it's all an enclo enclosed roller coaster. So it's inside this massive building, um, which was stated to be the size of five spaceship hearths. Um, if that's the size of five spaceship hearths, then <laughs> spaceship hearth is tiny. <laughs> um, but then. Um, obviously, it's got onboard audio, spinning cars, launches. In fact, the status that it's going to be the first roller coaster in the world, I think, or at least the first one in Disney history to feature a backwards launch. That is crazy, honestly. And I think it was also said that it's going to be the most expensive roller coaster ever built in the world. Um, I think they said it's going to cost like five hundred million dollars or something. Yeah, Disney actually did hold the title of the world's most expensive roller coaster for some time. It all started back in 2006 when they built Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And that cost them $100 million to build. It held that record for about 13 years until Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure opened at Universal Orlando um, in 2019. And that, that cost Universal a total of $300 million to build. And obviously I can see why, because it's a very immersive attraction. But now, Disney seems to be taking that title back with the new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which I think was reported to cost them $500 million to build. So, I mean, when you think about it, 
a spinning launch coaster with onboard audio on its own. I don't think that would cost $500 million to build, so I, I think it's for the entire project overall. But they must have made it extremely immersive if it's going to cost them $500 million. Obviously, we know that we've got the the Galaxarium how, at the beginning, just before the ride, which is supposed to be like the pre-show. Um, but apparently that they've put a lot of effort into that. There's the theming in and out of the, the show building, well not the show building, but the, um, the queue line and entrance. And I think they've put some theming inside of the actual show building itself, because obviously it's all going to be enclosed, so it's going to be in the dark, or all in the dark from what we know. But there's going to be some certain sections where they make it so it's like fully immersive. I'm not sure how they're going to pull it off, because it's not got virtual reality on it. So it's all going to be enclosed. I don't know how they're going to pull off the immersiveness of it, because we've only seen like little um, pictures of little sneak peeks of the inside of the show building, but anyway, with the lights on, so you could actually see the track. Um, obviously, the ride vehicle is very immersive and heavily themed. It's supposed to be themed to the spaceship from Guardians of the Galaxy, from what I've seen. Um, I don't know how they're going to pull it off, but if it's the most expensive roller coaster in the world, then it must be very immersive. But I'm hoping it's going to be incredible. It's actually the first roller coaster ever built at Epcot. That is just weird to think. Epcot opened way back in 1982. It's the 40th anniversary this year. Literally, Epcot waited 40 years to get a new roller coaster. And it's themed to Guardians of the Galaxy. There's actually been some debate over that as to whether it should be in, like, Disney's Hollywood Studios or something like that. Because obviously it's themed to a Marvel property and it's kind of different than what Epcot focus on. Um, but obviously Epcot are going through, like, a massive overhaul at the moment. Um, COVID has had a bit of an effect on that, like we've seen with, like I mentioned earlier, with um, them postponing the new Mary Poppins attraction in the United Kingdom Pavilion at World Showcase and the Spaceship Earth overhaul, which, if COVID didn't happen, Spaceship Earth would have su was supposed to be closed in May 2020 and will probably only be re reopening this summer or around sometime this year. Um, but obviously because of Covid, they've not done that and Spaceship Earth is actually still operating to this day. Now as for the Mary Poppins attraction, I don't even know what's going on with that at the moment. But other than that, they've got a new uh, Moana themed walkthrough attraction, which is actually being built as we speak. Um, there's been some recent construction of this and apparently they're planning for it to open later this year. It'll probably open in like late summer at this rate because I've not, I don't know if I even know how much construction they've got to do with that because it's all like... Um, like an immersive walkthrough attraction with water and trees and plants and things like that, from what I've heard. Um, and other than that, they've got the Guardians Coast, which is opening on 27th of May, which we know has happened. They've already opened Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, which is a expansion to the France Pavilion in World Showcase. Um, other than that, I don't know what else they've got, apart from obviously the um, Spaceship Earth Overhaul and Mary Poppins attraction, which have both been postponed indefinitely which is very sad to hear. The United Kingdom Pavilion in the World Showcase needs an attraction. Please don't cancel the Mary Poppins attraction. We need something in the United Kingdom Pavilion. All the other pavilions, or at least most of them, have some form of attraction. Where What's the UK Pavilion got? Nothing as of yet. But anyway, this is about the Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster. Obviously, when this opens, it should be a step forwards in for the future of Epcot. Um, hopefully, they'll... They might add some more roller coasters after this, you don't know. I mean, Disney, they're not really desperate to build roller coasters as much as some other theme parks are, like Alton Towers or, or some parks in the UK, or some thrill parks like Cedar Fair, not Cedar Fair, Cedar Point, or Six Flags, or something like that. They're more focused on more immersive experiences, so things like Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, or like I said, Remy, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. But when they do build roller coasters, they make them hyper immersive attractions. Um, other than the Guardians of the Galaxy coaster, the next coaster they have planned is Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. And construction for that seems to be steadying at a, quite a, a steady pace at the moment. It is rumoured that you know, it, Tron Light Cycle Run could open at the end of um, this year, or even 2023. Let's just hope it might just get open for like probably late summer or something like that. But until then, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind seems to hopefully get things back on track for Disney, hopefully. 
um, and this should be good for Epcot's future in terms of more thrill rides because Epcot don't really have a lot of thrill rides. Probably the only one that they seem to have until Guardians Coast to open is probably Mission Space and Test Track. Um, obviously, Test Track is the current fastest ride in all of Walt Disney World, um, in all of the Disney parks all over the globe. Although it is reported that apparently the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is going to be faster than Rock and Roller Coaster, which is the current fastest roller coaster at Walt Disney World, at least until Tron opens. Um, how fast it's going to be? It could be 60, it could be faster than Test Track. It could have the potential to be the fastest roller coaster, fastest ride in any Disney park all over the globe. That is insane. I, I hope they do that. But it would have to be faster than 65 miles an hour. Can you imagine if they made Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind 70 miles an hour? That would be insane, honestly. Uh, hopefully one day I'll go back to Disney World and by then Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind will have opened as well as all the other attractions have got planned for the 50th anniversary celebrations and hopefully I'll be able to experience it one day but that won't be for a long time now because uh, travel has just been crazy since Covid started and I've not really got many plans to go to any theme parks abroad anytime soon so so far for now Indefinitely, this channel will mainly be sticking to UK theme parks until COVID pandemic be comes to a halt and everything just stops. But until then, the Guardians of the Galaxy Coast looks absolutely incredible and I can't wait to experience it, hopefully when we go back to Disney World one day. Also in the news today, Flamingo Land has officially reopened for the 2022 season. And this season for Flamingo Land looks to be probably better than the past couple of years at Flamingo Land since COVID started. Um, because obviously when COVID happens, they, um, all the theme parks in the UK didn't reopen until like July. And since then Flamingo Land, in terms of operations, have just been struggling severely. They've been severely low on staff, so some of the rides, most of the rides have been closed. Especially like during COVID in 2020 which was at the height of the COVID pandemic. Um, obviously the furlough scheme existed back then. I'm not sure if it does now, I don't think it does. But because of staffing issues, a lot of the rides could be closed, uh, were closed. Um, COVID restrictions meant that, because they're not like they're not like Alton Towers or Fort Park or anything like that where they're run by a massive corporation like Merlin or, or, or the Looping Group or anything like that. No, they're a family owned park. And so obviously, um, the, and especially because they're a, they're a theme park and zoo, um, they have to keep paying for their animals, even though they aren't getting the they weren't getting the visitor numbers in, which means they weren't getting any money. Each day they were closed, and they still had to pay for animals, so they were losing um, a lot of money. Meaning the their operations were really bad when they reopened. Um, obviously, they, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had to lay off um, some staff. So I I do. Uh, um, uh, uh, I am really sorry for anyone who was actually laid off for coming Alliance during COVID. Um, but obviously, since then, the operations have not been really great. Rides have been closed. And obviously, the new coaster, which was supposed to open in 2020, which is rumoured to be called Inversion, got delayed twice. And it was supposed to open last year, but obviously, staffing issues meant the construction team weren't on site. And they weren't able to really do a lot of construction work last year. Probably the most that they did last year is put like a little pond around the final turnaround section of the ride. That's probably about as much as they did last season. Now I can understand why they couldn't do a lot because of like staffing issues. Um, because of the furlough scheme. But obviously now COVID is nowhere near as bad as it was a year ago. And um, because I think it was a year ago we were still in lockdown technically. Um, but obviously, COVID restrictions don't even exist anymore, I don't think. Um, and obviously they haven't really got as much staffing issues as they did before. All the construction team is back on site for the new coaster, which has since been fully repainted, might I add. And testing will probably start soon if the train scout sites, uh, the trains for the rise, the new coaster, just seem to have been wiped off the face of the earth. Because they're literally nowhere to be seen on site. At least I've not seen any like pictures or videos of it. The only, the only time we've actually seen the trains for the ride on site was when they did pull through testing in March 2020, just before lockdown. Since then, we've not seen any of that, any of the trains. 
but on the map it showed the um the ride vehicles with un Union Jack flags on it. So they're probably repainting that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if I already did it. Well, so they repainted the rise to its proposed colour scheme of silver track and black supports. Um, they've done some landscaping around it. I think they're constructing a pathway that goes underneath the quadruple heartline roll. Um, they've added um, permanent fencing around the, in and around the ride. The station's been done up. Um, and I said they've they start to build the queue line, all that, all that stuff. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if they start testing it soon. I hope they do, because this ride is over 10 years old, technically. Even though it's only been at Flamingoland since around 2019, the ride has existed way longer than that. It was supposed to be opening in Hopi Harriet Amusement Park in Brazil for the 2012 season, but because they struggled with financial issues, they couldn't open it, so they had, to, they had no choice but to sell it to another park. So they sold it to Movie Animation Park Studios in Malaysia, where they had it in storage for a few years, up until 2019, where they put that up, ride up for sale, and Flamingoland bought the ride for £20 million, which is very expensive, by the way. It's more expensive than things like the Smiler on Towers, and that's just a relocated 10 year version coaster. Um, I actually was told by a member of the staff there, the general manager, back in 2019, that if they bought a brand new one, they wouldn't be able to afford it. So it's good thing they got a relocated one. <laughs> um, but obviously, since then, they've, they've built up the um, vertical construction, the track was completed, so they fully repainted it, which is probably the most construction that ride has ever had in its lifetime. It's never operated though. The only thing it's got close to operating is when they did pull through testing. Um, but I, I'd imagine they're going to test it soon. And Flamingo Land season this year seems to be a good one for them because it definitely looks like that 10 inversion coaster is going to open this year, particularly the same that they wanted to open in summer this year. So that's going to be absolutely incredible and I can't wait to get on it because obviously I don't think I'm going to be going back to Flamingo Land until, until one, until they've got the new coaster open and two, they get their operations straight again. Um, and all the not they don't have rides that are closed just because of like staffing issues or anything like that. So I, I, this does definitely look like the ride could open this year. I've never been this hopeful about the ride since COVID started. Um, but it does look like it's going to be an incredible ride. And this season looks to be the best season at Flamingoland since 2019 before COVID started. So I can't wait to go back to Flamingoland hopefully late this year. And finally in the news today, the first track section on Airy Force 1 at Funspot Atlanta has officially been installed. And obviously it's only like a small little section, it's, it's not even a full section of track, it's like one rail on, on the lift hill. They've started placing track on the lift hill and they've placed one out of the two rails on, of the track because this ride's track is a bit unique. Um, it's going to be a multicoloured track basically, the, the, the left rail on the track is going to be red and the right rail is going to be blue, they've obviously placed a blue rail on the, on the right side of the lift hill and obviously that means the track is now being installed. It was only like last week I think it was that the ride got topped off of the top of the 155 foot tall lift hill and obviously they've now started installing track and it looks incredible. This ride is supposed to open this year, I wouldn't be surprised if it opens sometime in like the summer because they've only just started vertical construction probably about a month ago and now they've started placing track and it looks an um, incredible ride. It looks like one of the best roller coasters built by RMC ever and it's it's actually weird to think that that's going to fun spot Atlanta because they're only like a small park um, Small, at least in comparison to Fun Spot Orlando, which seems to get a lot of attention from them. And they've got this new massive RMC hybrid iBox coaster um, that looks to be one of their best rides ever. Obviously, whether it will top Iron Guazi, I don't think so, but it looks like it will be one of the top 10 best RMCs in the or maybe even top 5 best RMCs in the world. I mean, I wouldn't know because there aren't any RMCs in the UK. <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> Um, but it looks like it's going to be an incredible ride. It's got a lot of airtime and inversion. In fact, it's literally just after the first drop was rumoured to be an Immelman, which would have, if that was true, would have been the first Immelman on an RMC coaster. But I think that was later debunked and it turned out to be a, a dive loop, which is a shame because 
dive loops have been seen on our MC before on Immelman's haven't, but at least we'll still hopefully one day be able to see an Immelman on our MCs because it's basically a backwards dive loop. So it, obviously when this wide open is going to be a, a big step forward for the future of Fun Spot Atlanta and it looks insane. I hope one day something like this gets built in Britain because we really want RMC to build something in this country. In fact, they even teased it the other week saying um, there was something posted on social media by an enthusiast saying like um, how the UK says the most iconic roller coaster in the world is over 28 years old and how they've not got an RMC or something like that. And an RMC replied to that post saying we're on our way. So that's a sign that RMC is coming to Britain. On top of that, there have there been a lot more rumours recently about Alton Towers building Secret Weapon 9. So let's just hope that RMC, it's looking likely that RMC could come to the UK within the next couple of years. And um, obviously, let's hope that they build something like Air Force One, because that looks like an insane ride. So that is it for this week's episode of Coast News. I hope you've really enjoyed it. If you have, then please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you'd like to see in the next video. Bye!